Hello. In this video, we're going to look at the hidden slide panels we use in Seed Code Complete. We really like these uh, slide panels that were introduced in FileMaker 13. They're a really nice, light way to do panels on your layouts uh, in all the platforms. And then, of course, on Mac and on FileMaker Go, they have this great animation effect that we like. So we have three basic slide panels that we use on all of our main layouts. The first one governs this kind of main view and then edit mode and also find mode. So that's kind of on this main large tab panel. And then to the right we have what we call the detail panel and that's managed by these buttons down here with this nice uh, selection effect. And we get this effect using the hide object on calculation and conditional formatting. I'll show you how that works in a second. And then we also have a little panel here for notes, and notes live on uh, almost every layout, and they follow uh, the same pattern with a little panel here for sliding back and forth to uh, edit mode and also to manage the sorts, although we don't uh, put animation on that. So when you first go into layout mode, uh, the panels are hidden. So to see them, uh, to find them, uh, can be a little tricky at first. The main panel that governs edit, view, and find mode is, is right here on the edge. So you can just double click that and it'll bring up the little controller here. And then you can toggle through them and, and find the ones that you want. Then the detail panel is a little bit to the right of that. and You might have to take a couple of stabs at it. But uh, once you get it selected, what I like to do is uh, grab the inspector and I'm going to go ahead and unlock it and then I'm going to go to the appearance tab and I'm going to put a temporary outer shadow on it, something real obvious like uh, red and I'm going to go ahead and apply that uh, to the whole style. So now when I'm in layout mode I can easily see uh, this uh, red uh, outline for my hidden panels and work with them a lot easier. And then when I'm done uh, making my changes I can just revert changes to the theme and those will go back to the way they were. So uh, that's, a, that's a nice uh, trick using themes that I like to do for working with these hidden objects in layout mode. So one thing I might want to do is uh, create a new detail panel. So what I'm going to do is uh, double click on the control, bring up my slide control, and you might want to turn the dots on for this. The dots help uh, show which, which one is active in addition to this text up here. And we want to go to the last one because when we create a new panel, it's going to create it uh, based on our current position. So we're on the first panel here. I'm going to hit new and it adds a new one in the second position. But that, that's not where I want it. I want it at the very end. So I'm going to toggle to the end. The other nice thing to know about these dots, if you, if you weren't aware of this, is these are the ways, the dots are the only way to change the order of the tab panel by dragging and dropping them. Uh, so that's a nice thing to know. Took me a little, little while to figure that out. So um, we'll get onto our last slide panel and then we'll create a new one. So here's our new one and then we want to name that one. But I'm going to look at how the others are named first. See if there's a pattern there. So we use the underscore panel underscore and then a description of the tab panel name. And the naming convention is, is not important but uh, it's nice to follow it. If you see an existing pattern it's always a good idea to try to follow that. And uh, now we'll go to our new panel and we'll create, let's say we're going to make this uh, vendors panel. So once I have the new panel named, I'm going to go ahead and copy that name to my clipboard. And then I'm going to lock the panel again so I don't accidentally uh, bump it or anything. Now I'm going to zoom in and go over here. Uh, to these buttons here at the lower end of the sidebar because I want to create a new one of these uh, to take me to that panel and I want to have the hide conditions and everything work like it works on the others. So what, I, what we always like to do in FileMaker is you know copy something that's working already and then uh, modify it and hopefully it'll work the way we want. So we're going to grab that whole group and then we're going to hold Option down on Macintosh and drag it down to duplicate it or control on Windows to get a new one. We may need to, we've got our little guides there helping us with our spacing. We, we may need to check the inspector to get that exactly right, but that, that's fine. 
Then we're going to go through these objects and we see we've got hide conditions and conditional formatting. And uh, we're going to adjust those. So I'm, I'm going to go into this little arrow here at the fir at, uh, first. And we see it has a hide condition. And what it's using is it's figuring out which is the front panel. And then it's hiding itself based on that condition. So uh, pretty simple using the get layout object attribute uh, calculation. So I copied my new panel name. So really all I need to do in these calculations is find the uh, existing panel name and then replace it with my new one. And that should take care of all my hiding. So there's my little arrow. Now I'm gonna get my little stripe. And again, just find the old panel name, paste in the new one. Uh, I've got a button on the top here that's got a hide condition on it because we're gonna hide the panel when it's in, we're gonna hide the button when the panel is in focus. So maintain that pattern. Um, I've got some text behind that button, so I'm going to go ahead and send it backwards. A couple steps, and then uh, go ahead and update our text here to what we want to use. Now, the, the, this text block doesn't have a hide condition on it, but it does have conditional formatting on it. So I'm going to right click on it and change my conditional formatting. And same thing, I'm going to find the panel name and update it to my new one. And then we also have uh, this little number uh, panel here. And uh, this is basically a count of these related records. Now we haven't set vendors up yet, but it's, it's just a merge field uh, in there. And you'll just change that merge field uh, once you know what that number is. For now, uh, I'm just gonna leave it like the other one. Make it 24. But I do wanna change the conditional formatting so again, it goes blue when its panel is in focus. So again, go through that. So we've done our arrow, our stripe, our text, our button, um, our little number counter here, and then we have this little object here as well, our little icon. And uh, we're gonna hide that when the panel's in focus too. So bring that in. And then I can also go ahead and change that icon. And, and those are done through repeating uh, uh, global calculations. Um, we've got some uh, documentation on that, and I, I happen to know by heart, believe it or not, that uh, number two is my contact, so that's what I want to use for vendors, so I've changed that as well. Um, so now I'm going to send my text to the back. I like just uh, changing the stacking of these objects um, so I don't have to worry about their lateral or up and down position. So what I'm trying to do is I want to get my button on top. Now if you're just working in FileMaker Pro, that's not a big deal, but if you want these layouts to work in WebDirect, it's important to make sure that the button is on top. FileMaker is smart enough to blow through an object you can't click and find the clickable object, but WebDirect is always going to want to click the top one. So it's maybe a little bit uh, extra work, but uh, making sure these buttons are always on top will make sure that your layouts work in WebDirect. So I've done all that, and now I also want to change um, the parameter of the script that calls the panel. And we basically have one script, and what we do is we pass it the object name. And so I'm just going to paste that in there as well. And now when I go back to browse mode, I've got my new panel in place, and it's following uh, the existing pattern. So all I have to do is update the number field in there to reflect my vendors, and of course, you know, add whatever I'm going to add here. I'm going to go back into layout mode because one thing I forgot to do is revert the changes to the theme, and that will get rid of my red lines. And then I also am going to take my dots off as well. So once I've done that. We've got our new panel and uh, following our existing pattern with the animation on Mac and Go and uh, we're good to go. So thank you very much.